Hey YouTube, so I was tipped off by someone on Facebook about some cheap US made filament uh, from a company called Fiber Rich USA. Uh, this is their Geno's line of uh, 3D printer filaments. And their eBay listing happened to have at that time a kilogram spool of PLA silver. So I figured for 10 bucks, why not? Give it a try, see what happens came quick in the mail um, and their packaging pretty much just consists of their business card taped to the spool they did have a vacuum packed with the desk and pack in it so otherwise great uh, it's a bit of a darker silver I would say um, but it's uh, pretty cool silver is a hard color to define because it's uh, I know this from car paints it tends to be like a almost semi translucent silver base and then they add extremely small a metallic flake to it in order to try and give it that uh, shininess to it. Um, so a difficult color to really define. So everyone's silver is slightly different. So I thought I'd show off some cool stuff I've made with it. Um, starting with uh, basic calibrations. So temperature tower is good. Quality is pretty good even all the way up to 190. Um, it only had this one little dip down here at uh, 230. But otherwise it's been it's been pretty forgiving and no difference whatsoever on the back of the tower at all. So it's across the temperature range, it's quite good. Um, flow rate's good, calibration cube comes out perfect uh, for what my printer's been doing. And uh, then I went into retraction tests. So at a standard 210, which is what I normally print, it's hard to say, hard to see this a little bit. You might be able to just barely see that, but there's a, just the finest faint wisps uh, towards the uh, anywhere above really four millimeters is of retraction is tending to do just the finest of uh, wisps um, and it's worse than at 195 and it's about the same at uh, this is at 220 this is pretty much the range I would bother trying to print at with PLA um, this is all from teaching text pre-sliced uh, retraction tests uh, in comparison, this is a um, Hatchbox Black PLA, which has um, not really, there's just a couple really faint wisps, it's hard to see them, but uh, even the Hatchbox can't get around the wisp features of uh, the retractions from Simplify 3D. There's a couple tricks that Cura does that fixes all that. Um, for strength, then, I also, I did a headphone print. So this is one of the shells from it, and um, it's a difficult print to do because it utilizes these complex pegs that go through these holes. And in order to install them, you really have to crank them apart in order to fit it on. So it's really easy to snap it since it's, uh, you're pulling perpendicular to the layer lines. Um, so I broke off a piece up above, I think, this side, and then I just started breaking it apart just to see how it would perform. But what's cool is uh, this one piece snapped off not quite at the layer lines, kind of went in between, um, up and down, a couple different layers here. But when it snapped upwards, it was nice and consistent all the way through. So it's just showing off some good uh, fusion between the layers. And um, this also is a nice way to show how it's handling the flow rate in terms of supports. So this piece is built with uh, two support towers that go all the way up, like inside the piece. So they actually rest against the base and it is so hard to see. You can barely tell that there was any support material right there. It's actually just right there. And uh, they snap off clean, right off. No post-processing on that there. So. Support material has been doing good for it. This is a nice print, but this is done quick. This is a like 0.2 layer height and uh, like 60 millimeters a second with only two walls. But this is for a pair of earbuds. Put a pair of earbuds here, wrap the cord around, close it up. Cool. Functional prints. I've done a few of those. So these are just some tests that we're doing for uh, different cooling ducts for the uh, the Ender 3, which uh, these were all printed on. Um, they kind of vary. Some are good. Well, the the cooling ducts just uh, well, well, the fan is just not powerful enough. Really, it needs a bigger fan on that printer. Uh, and then other functional prints that I really wanted to do was a nice Arduino case. Um, 
which came out pretty good and this is done super quick as well so not exactly the best print settings i was still learning on this guy but uh all the lettering came out and bed adhesion was great for it so uh, i like this because i always have an arduino on hand just to do little test projects or uh just to actually try and run some code on the arduino itself and this is nice to have one actually in a case uh, of course then you also do a vase print um so this guy was printed um, using Norris's trick. So you uh, you f do three bottom bases, and once it immediately starts to spiralize the outer contour, you crank up the flow rate to 130%. So what that ends up with is that the top of the vase is extremely strong. It's, it's pretty stiff, and it's also completely watertight. So definitely a nice trick to do, and uh, came out pretty well with that. Definitely, definitely works good. Uh, then semi-functional prints, uh, platform jack, which I actually printed on a raft, and um, it's interesting because it actually it was pulling up on the raft so hard it actually pulled the corners up, but uh, came out fully functional, didn't have any issues. Um, decent print, probably can't hold a lot of weight, um, just the way it's built because the screw is. Um, built with uh, the threads parallel to the the uh, layer lines, so the screws on tension pulling the layer lines apart. So, but anyways, this is a cool print because you print it all at once, standing up, and it just comes right off the right off the build plate like that. Neat. Uh, then of course, you do a lot of big things like a headphone stand from uh, MakerBot. This is actually not MakerBot's headphone stand. Someone remixed it in order to fix a lot of the, the printing issues with the original model. Like it had like a, an 85% overhang on the second layer or something ridiculous like that and this guy fixed it. Uh, I'll have all the links of all the models I'm showing you down in the video description. Um, but this came out really nice. So this is at a 0.15 layer height, but I think this is also printed at 60 mils a second which is a little probably too fast for something like this, but uh, layers came out great. It's just it's super impressed. It looks good. The color consistency across is pretty good. Uh, I think it's really, really nice. Uh, pretty good, I was impressed. So doing some other things like this vise. So this is just a uh, a bench vise really for using for circuit boards and stuff like that. Um, the base was printed in Hatchbox PLA and all the moving parts were done in the fiber rich silver. No post processing on the uh, the fiber rich stuff. All I had to do is take these, these screw nuts here and run it up and down the rods a couple times to clean off the threads. That was it. And it's just so smooth so nice practically has momentum it's so uh, really 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 like the how it came out and how it feels it's so smooth on some of these parts the base was printed at 0.16 um with i think i want to say almost 30 percent gyroid infill and the all the other moving parts were done at 0.12 layer height with uh, i think 30 percent gyroid infill because i wanted strong component and uh, wanted to build this only once essentially so this came out nice um, filament is holding up and then for the big reveal why not do Voyager so this is a, a model Nerys fixed um, I have the link down in the description for it uh, if you don't know your Star Trek this is the USS Voyager from Star Trek Voyager TV series. Uh, this is printed in two parts, um, split here across the engineering section. One part, uh, the back aft section is printed with uh, in the cells facing down. They have their own little brimming integrated into them, prints it up there. And then the whole saucer section in the upper engineering section is printed as another piece that goes all the way up. And this is mostly hollow. It's like four, four walls, I think. And there's a couple bits of support around the uh, main deflector 
and uh, I think that was about it. It's it's surprising. It uh, it really came out really well. I'm impressed. The uh, the cooling um, is a bit low. There should have been a dish on the uh, navigational deflector here, but that didn't survive the print. It just uh, it was just a spaghetti mess by the time I saw it. Uh, just not enough cooling for it, but the, uh, the print came out so great. This is from Norris. He provided some pre-sliced stuff for the Ender 2, so I just printed that right on the Ender 3. And uh, I like this print. I already have a model of the Voyager from long, long ago, but I don't have it here with me. It's hidden someplace in one of the attics, so I decided to print out another one. So cool. So this is a Fiber Rich's Silver PLA from their Geno's 3D, 3D printer filament line. I have a link of uh, their stuff down in the video description, uh, available on eBay, ships from the US. and. Um, really really cool you should check them out they're a young company they're only been around for like two and a half years and uh they have other stuff besides uh pla i know they have abs and tpu and they actually even offer uh refills so you can get a master spool from them and they'll give you uh the um the refills for a significant price reduction and uh really cool really cool check them out i'm impressed for ten dollars, ten dollars, <laughs> love it, absolutely love it. Please uh, like, subscribe, and comment. Enjoy.